become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, golden era bookworm here. Did Reg Park use steroids? That is a question that is so often asked and today I have the great pleasure of presenting part of an interview in which John John Park, that's right, Reg Park's own son, the man that lived trained and ate with him and knew him better than most of us ever will answers that very very important question in a time when only weak forms of testosterone were available it is unknown as to whether pre-1960s bodybuilders used any performance enhancing drugs this topic which is such a hotly debated topic online um, is still ongoing and so i decided to ask john john park directly to address this question, which he answers in today's video. Enjoy. So um, today's topic, I really wanted to cover the big question on uh, that a lot of people ask on my channel. And that is um, the obvious question about your father, no. whether no. you ever saw him take steroids or if you know he ever took any performance enhancing drugs to develop his physique, uh, his strength, etc. Yeah, I, I never in all my life saw him take steroids. Uh, um, I don't know anybody who ever saw him take steroids. I know that he was um, adamantly opposed to steroids. He used to talk about his all the time. Uh, he would say for him, Taking steroids was like robbing a bank. Robbing a bank. In a way, was it perhaps eventually get caught? Eventually get caught. And uh, hmm. you know, he just felt that uh, he, he was all about health aspect mm -hmm. more than anything else, you know. And then I know guys who trained with him. I know guys who spent a lot of time with him. I know guys who got very, very close to him. And they were all adamant and swore that he never took steroids. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to understand when he moved to South Africa, you know, steroids weren't that available at that stage anyway. That's very true. You know? And uh, by that stage, um, you know, and living in South Africa, he was already on his uh, second, he had already won his second Mr. Universe title. He was established in South Africa. Mm. So, yeah. Um, Plus, uh, um, on another note, I'd like to say, uh, although he certainly had probably more mass and size than most of his competitors, I don't think had he continued to steroids, he would have a, been able to co keep that mess and B, the look of the physiques when steroids came in started to take a, com a completely different appearance. And I don't believe he ever had that appearance of somebody who had, you know, new steroids. Yeah. Certainly in terms of the, 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 the vascularity aspect in terms of the, the very tight skin, you know. Correct. And um, almost in certain cases, a, a, like on a Caucasian anyway, more of a pinkish glow to the skin. Yeah. I don't believe he ever showed those symptoms. That's very true. I mean, when you look at the magazines at the end of the 1950s and the very early 60s, you suddenly see uh, the appearance of of a much tighter skin, like the skin is much thinner. The the um, the vascularity is, is a massive thing you actually see. But but Reg had this massive physique without being vascular. Yeah, he just looked Herculean. But um, yeah, it's just um, as you said, he, he didn't look like he was on on any performance enhancing drugs. It's just a, a different yeah. physique, a different look altogether. Yeah. Thick and powerful. Yeah. 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 Um, the other thing is, which I've, I've, I've addressed in, in, 
in, in discussions and in previous posts on Instagram. Um, and people sort of need to wrap their head around this is that many, many people train as we know, and many people play sports, but it's at what level? Um, how many people can actually be the best of the best in their field? Mm -hmm. And there's very few. If it was that e easy, everyone would be a champion. Correct. Um, but if you take into consideration, you know, the mindset of wanting to be the actual best and the devotion and the time and the discipline that you have to have to get to that level, you know, it's, 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 um, it's, it's a paradigm shift mm -hmm. of the human mind. And when you consider in his early days, how he started training in, uh, in, in, in the outdoors, whether it be snow, hail, sleet, rain, um, uh, with very, very austere conditions and then progressing to a, a corrugated iron garage without any um, electricity, without any mirrors, without any uh, internal heating, um, you have to consider how many people would actually go to that low level and train two to three hours a day at a time. So it's, it's, it's much easier to say, ah, oh, well, to look like he looked and to get to that level, you would have had to have used steroids. No, my answer is, I think had he used steroids, he would have lost the aesthetic symmetry that he had to his physique. I don't believe he would have maintained that tight um, midsection area. Um, I think he would have taken on a different appearance, but um, to get to that level, he was one of the few that was disciplined enough and devoted enough to go to the lengths and the extremes that he went to achieve that level. Hmm. And for the most part, I would say, you know, 99% of the people could never do that. You know, if you look at the Navy SEALs, a lot of people try it for the Navy SEALs and a lot of them are superb conditioned, tough, disciplined athletes. Uh, but they only select a handful at the end of the day. Yeah. So if it was that easy, everybody would be a Navy SEAL. Yeah. So it's much easier to then turn around and say, oh, well, they've had to do this, they've had to do that, they had to have used the performance of advancing drugs. No, they've gone to the level where nobody else is willing to go. It's interesting you say that because the people that usually make these accusations are usually just um, not even average gym goers. I would say that these are people that obviously have never really achieved anything in their life and simply to feel better or to feel like uh, that they are not as, I don't want to say losers, but I guess that's what they are, um, to not feel as bad about themselves, about their own ego being hurt, uh, because they could never achieve anything, they then bring everybody else down that can, you know, so. You've hit, you've hit the nail on the head, and, and, and that's what I was, I, I was going to um allude to that is that um, most of the people who make these comments are never people who have really achieved any mm. sort of accomplishments or level of, you know, uh, success in their training or in the comp competitive world. And most of them haven't even competed mm. at that level. So it's much easier to, you know, as you say, make themselves feel better by saying that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had a guy recently asked me if Reg, he said, Reg took some kind of steroid, right? And I said, no. I said, uh, if you look at um, my previous posts, he was adamantly opposed to it. And uh, he said, so he never took anything. I said, uh, did I not answer my, uh, did I not answer you in my first post? He said, that was a blatant lie. You know? oh. So I said, okay, so I guess you knew him better than I did, you know. <laughs> and most people who make these comments knew nothing about him. They never, and you know, to make an accusation like that, 
did they ever spend time with him? Did they ever try pain with him? Did they ever you know, uh, see every morsel that he put into his mouth? You know. Yeah. So it's very easy to make those accusations. Okay, so you know, you're right. That's I, I, I call the guy a loser. You know. Mm. I said, well, so there's no point even continue a conversation like that. Because, Correct. You know, they're going to have their beliefs, and that's fine. But you know. I certainly don't have to defend his position or my position to, to, to the likes of those people. That's right. I mean, you, you know, lived with him. Gonna, you're always going to have the naysayers anyway. Yeah, you know. that's true. For example, I digress. Um, you know, growing up in Australia, I'm sure you're familiar with rugby. Mm-hmm. And uh, South Africa, as you know, just won the World Cup last weekend. Yeah. Uh, which, bearing in mind the nature of the volatility of South Africa today it was a wonderful uh, achievement for South Africa, um, for the whole population at large, yeah. where you had black and white uh, playing together, working together with no animosity or ill will towards each other, uh, and, and fans alike celebrated. But, um, the leader of this uh, militant group, uh, who the best way to classify him is a militant thug. Of course, this, the whole country was in a state of euphoria and still is. And of course, he turned it into a whole political thing uh, and a whole racial thing, uh, which actually backfired on him to the extent where certain people in his party were like, you know, how can you deny this is so good for the country? Yeah. So you're always going to get those naysayers. True. And, you know, what can you do? I mean, at the end of the day, who are they and what do they really mean? Yeah. You know, in the big picture. That's all. But I can tell you now, I know of people who, for, the, for, for example, the likes of Jerry Brainham, who we've discussed, mm-hmm. the former science editor of Muscle and Fitness, he's always... Because he has his blog, and you know he uh, he has a um, a, um, a nutritional uh, uh, magazine he does online, yeah. a supplement magazine, and he's always got into these discussions, and he's always stood up for the likes of Ranch, and then he he says exactly what you said is that most of these people making these statements are people who've never really accomplished anything. Yeah, that's so true. Um- Now, if you're interested in learning more about how Reg Park developed his Herculean physique, please visit my website, www.coltonerobookham.com, where you'll find books titled such as Reg Park's original 5x5 routines. That's right, his original 5x5 routines that helped him develop that thick mass and strength, as well as that enormous ribcage. That that information you'll find on ribcage and chest development also by Reg Park plus many other titles written by Rich Park, available on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. So I do hope this interview has answered the question as to whether Rich Park took anabolic steroids. Now you know the answer. Direct from John John Park, his own son, who lived with him, saw every morsel that he ate, and spent countless hours training with him in the gym. Rich Park was able to achieve his Herculean physique naturally, and definitely stands on par with many greats such as Steve Reeves and Marvin Edda as one of the most iconic natural bodybuilders that ever walked this earth. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm and leave me your comments. And again, thank you for watching. If you'd like to support my research, please donate via PayPal or become a patron. You can visit my website, www.goldenerabookham.com, for out-of-print books and courses and self-written books as well. Um, All on old-school bodybuilding, of course. And, of course, I'll be bringing you much more John John Park interviews. And um, if you wish to collaborate like I am with John John Park, please just email me. Anyway, that's it for me. Hope you've enjoyed the video. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now. Hi everybody, Um, here's a quick announcement from Old School Labs, one of my sponsors. They're giving away 20 free products. Um, If you simply follow the rules as listed, you like the post on Instagram that I'll be actually putting in the description, in in the description of this video. You've got to like the post. So click click on the link, like the post, 
follow old school labs and tag a friend and uh you know give a comment you know give a comment and that'll count as an entry as you can read there the more comments you give the more um chances you have of winning because each comment counts as one entry uh, on on top of that they are also have they also have a special offer uh, where, you, where you can get 20% off all their products on Amazon. That's right, on Amazon.com. You simply use the code START2020 and uh, you can you know, go through all their different products. Use that code to get 20% off. So either way, you're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to get rewarded with a 20% off discount, even if you don't get uh, one of these 20 free products in the giveaway. Okay, that's it. And uh, yeah, check it out. Old School Labs. Thanks. To take full advantage of my affiliation with NSP Nutrition and Old School Labs, please visit their respective websites and use codes GEB20 or Bookworm12 to get a discount off their selected products. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.